So we implemented iValidatable object and created a validation for the properties inside of the class. And now we're going to create a validation that actually implements the validation context and it will be a class level validation. So let's create a folder and I'll call it validation attributes. And let's add a class to it. And I'll call it title and description attribute. So this is going to be implemented for a title and description just like we did the iValidatable object. And here instead of using the iValidatable object, we are going to inherit from validation attribute. Let's bring in the namespace, which is in the data annotations. And here we're going to implement a method is valid. That's part of the validation attribute. So we will override it to fit our needs. So it's a protected method that we will override. And you can see the IntelliSense is already giving us the is valid method. So the is valid method returns validation result. And you can see that it expects validation context, just like we had over here for the iValidatable object. So here we are going to be comparing the title and the description of the album. So first we need to get the object of the album. So let's create a variable and I'll call it album. And this will come from the validation context. So it's going to be validation context dot and we'll get the object instance. So here we of course have to tell it what object we actually want here. So we have to cast this into our object and the object we want is the album for creating DTO because that's where the input validation will actually occur. So it's going to be the album for creating DTO cast. And we need to bring in the namespace which is in the models folder. So now we have the instance of our object and we can do the comparison between the title and the description. So that's an if statement again. So if the album dot title matches the album dot description, then that will throw an error. And the error is going to be the same. So I'm just going to get this and copy this, but not the yield because this one is a simple return statement. So copy that and paste it here. So here we will return the validation result as this method expects us to do. We have a custom title and we have a custom description of the error and let's make it a little different from the previous one just so we know where it's coming from. So I'll just add the over here. So it's going to be the title and the description. And if this fails, meaning the title and description are not the same, then we can return a success because no error occurred. So we will return validation result dot success. So this is a custom attribute that we can now add on the class level. So let's go to our album for creating DTO. And here on the class level, we will add this attribute that we just created. And that's the title and description attribute. Let's bring in the namespace, which is in the validation attribute folder. So this way we created our own custom attribute, just like is required or maximum length, and we applied it to the class level. So in order to test this, I'm going to comment this out as well as this method. And let's run this. So let's just pass in the title and I'll call it some title and the description will also be called some title. So now these match and let's run this and try to create an album. And we got the bad request and you can see this is our new message. The title and the description need to be different. So this is a custom attribute that just kicked in. 
So now let's make this long again. So the title and description match, but they are too long. Let's run this and we get 400 bad requests. And again, the title is too long as well as the description and a custom attribute did not kick in because this attributes kicked in before our attribute did, meaning there was already an error before our attribute was even evaluated. So these are the two ways you can use validation on a class level. You can either implement a validatable object and then have the validate method where you would specify the message, or you can create your own custom attribute, which often is more preferable because it's more reusable. You can use this attribute on other classes as well, if there was a need for this kind of evaluation. And next, let's have a look how to add custom error messages to the attributes like required or max length, which are already part of the .NET Core. 